Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman & Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan. And today we're going to continue our video series designed to educate and inform the public, so please subscribe to our channel. You know, when we talk about dividing assets in a divorce, the question always comes up, what is each person entitled to? Now, the question really stems from an older version of the law when you would have, let's say, going back to the 50s, where most households had the husband working, wife was a homemaker. That was a popular format of running a household then. So then when we talked about, well, what does one person get versus what another person gets, it made sense to analyze things like that because there was inequality in how the household was run. There was a very strong division of labor. Husband wife bringing in all the money, but the wife may have been responsible for raising the kids big division of labor, and so we had to discuss who gets what. Nowadays, though, we tend to see different types of households. We tend to see households where both parties are raising their kids, both parties are working, both parties are bringing in the money. It may even be the same money. I cannot tell you how many times we've had the divorces here in the office where husband and wife are essentially making the same amount of money. Why? They met on the job. They may have met at the factory working on the line together. <laughs> they literally have the same tenure and the same hourly rate. So when you decide who's going to get what, the court's burden is to basically distribute assets fairly, equitably. Equitably could mean equally. It could also mean not necessarily equal, given the other things that are going on in the case. I'll give an example. In Michigan, we're no fault divorce state, which means anybody for any reason at all can come before the court and ask for a divorce. But we might well take into account fault as it relates to some things other than the divorce itself. For example, how we distribute assets, there may be a fault factor there. So the court might do 50-50, might not. Might find that in fairly dividing the assets because one person was significantly in fault, that a different division of assets may be appropriate. I do want to tell you, though, that a lot of people will call in and say, well, you know, my wife cheated on me. My husband was an excessive gambler and spender. He was a womanizer. He did this to me. He did that to me. He abused me. So I want more of the assets. And the court will very well take that into account in determining what that division should be. But if you think the court is likely to say, well, because of fault, I'm going to give 90% of the assets to this one, 10% of that one, we don't see those kind of divisions. I will tell you that even cases of egregious fault, where one person is clearly more deserving than the other, the court may go 55 to 45, maybe 60, 40. You don't see 95, 5. You don't see 90, 10. There's no such thing. The court is generally going to stay within those parameters when it determines exactly what spouses are entitled to. Now, it's easy to determine when you have two sets of dishes, one will take one and one will take the other. If there's, uh, you know, two houses of equal value, one will keep one, one will keep the other. It's sometimes not so simple, though, if we don't have multiples of the same thing to make those determinations. And what the court will do then is to try to assign values to things so that we can make sure that at the end of the day, there's an equal division, at least of the value, if not an equal division, but an equitable division given the overall circumstances. If you have any questions about that, reach out, and of course, we'll be glad to help you out.